Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. The SEC has officially filed a notice of appeal in the case against Ripple. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, it is 6, 10 p.m. Central Time, which is my time zone, here in the Midwest of the United States. And so the news broke just over two hours ago. And, you know, I, I, I think probably most of the attorneys within the XRP community thought that there was a really good chance the SEC would do this. Um, even though they are so obviously on the wrong side of history that, um, I mean, it's a terrible move. It's, it's honestly not even in their best interest, but the SEC over the years has done all sorts of stuff in this case and other cases that are not in their best interest. Uh, so what does this mean for XRP, uh, including price action? What does it have to do uh, with XRP in terms of legal clarity? Should we be concerned as XRP holders? Uh, well, we're going to cover that in depth, and I'm going to share with you perspective uh, from a couple attorneys within the XRP community, as well as commentary from Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple's Chief Legal Officer, Stuart Alderati. And I will just tell you this, Brad Garlinghouse is pissed. Now, how do I know that? Because he literally said he's pissed. <laughs> he's pretty furious about this thing, and he used that word. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so um, as I've been saying in the weeks leading up to this, and mind you, like I didn't predict whether or not the SEC would file an appeal. I found it to be, for me personally, a pointless exercise because I know it didn't make sense for them, but I know that the SEC does things that aren't in their own best interest. Uh, and would be an absolute waste of taxpayer funds, so on and so forth. So I was like, I'll not be surprised if we see an appeal. Here we are. I'm not particularly surprised. And I noted that this won't matter for extra builds. I've been saying this consistently, in particular, in the, the, the weeks leading up to this. And so I noted that in July of last year, when XRP got regulatory clarity, the market responded. You know, the price of XRP doubled in about four hours. And of course, it wasn't sustained because that was at a moment for the next couple of months, few months, whatever it was, uh, where Bitcoin would slide down along with the rest of the market. So that wasn't wasn't sustained. Uh, but you could tell that there was a lot of exuberance in the moment, and rightfully so, uh, since XRP was in the clear and it was relisted on a whole bunch of exchanges. Now, when we had the conclusion of the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit in August of this year, leading up to that, I said, look, I acknowledge that you could have some sort of price spike when people... Uh, some people are gleeful and they maybe don't fully understand exactly what that means for XRP, but I said, even if that happens, it would be silly because XRP already has legal clarity and that happened last year. So that's why I said at the conclusion of this case, if we have a price pop for XRP, it wouldn't make a damn bit of sense. But if it happens, fine, people are rational markets and I wouldn't hate a price pop. Uh, and we got a little one. It was, it went up from memory here, I think like 15, maybe 20%, a little, nothing crazy, nowhere near, near what we saw in uh in july of last year and so that's why i was speculating that if we do get an appeal we're probably not going to see much of a price crater for xrp and so i said and i've said this many times i'm sure you've heard me say this before uh you know if we could see i mean maybe we do see i wasn't making a prediction but i said you know we could see a price drop uh, it scares people and maybe even if it's a 15 or 20 percent drop even if we have that i said it doesn't matter for xrp it would be irrational and, you know, eventually you'd just have a pop uh, off the whatever the lows would end up being, and it wouldn't matter. And I stand by that. And I'm going to explain why it doesn't matter. There, there's good reason why it doesn't matter. Now, here's how little the impact has been. And this has been really encouraging, at least to this point. Because, um, look, when, when news, news happens fast, right, we're in the age of information. It's not, it's not like something happens and then over a span of days and weeks, that information is disseminated to the rest of the world. No, people find out about this in real time, and if it's going to be something that moves the market, it happens immediately, uh, whether it's to the downside or the upside. And the market has, at least to this point, barely moved. When the news broke a couple hours ago, XRP was 56 cents. It dropped to 53 cents. It is now back up to 54.6 cents. So it went down about three cents and back up two cents, at least as of the time I'm recording this. This is not going to be some sort of massive 75% sell-off like you saw when the SEC initially sued Ripple almost four years ago. And of course not. The typical speculator understands this doesn't matter for XRP. Uh, you may notice that XRP is still listed on exchanges despite this appeal attempt here. Uh, it hasn't changed a damn thing. So there's a tiny, I mean, literally, you can see it on your screen here, there was a little bit of a sell-off. Um, and I don't know if that's it, but 
If it's going to continue, it's, I'm actually kind of surprised that we saw the pop that we saw after that low at 53 cents. It's it's come off that low. And that's kind of a, I mean, you can see it with your eyeballs there to have that type of move to the upside if we're not done moving to the downside. Uh, kind of surprised. I mean, I guess, I guess it could happen. Either way, it's not going to matter in the end. It's just simply not going to matter in the end. Um, and so there was, um, here's the actual notice, and it was kind of vague. So uh, this was shared by uh, attorney James Filan, and, um, and, and he reads as follows. Uh, this is from uh, the SEC, signed by Jorge Tenrero. It says, uh, please take notice that Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission hereby respect, respectfully of, appeals to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit from the final judgment entered by this court on August 7th, 2024. And that's it. It's very vague. Um, and so what exactly are they appealing? And because my guess would have been, to mind you, I'm not an attorney, but I would have guessed that there would have been some more specifics, but apparently that's going to be coming. Uh, Fox Business Journal, Eleanor Tarrant kind of touched on this. And she wrote, in the notice of appeal, the SEC says August 7th, because that's the day that everything became final judgment. They haven't explicitly stated which issues they plan to appeal yet. They could choose to appeal both the ruling on programmatic sales from July 2023 and the amount the court ordered Ripple to pay on institutional sales August 7th, or just one and not the other. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, so is it just going to be on the programmatic sales, or will it be on the disgorgement? Uh, or or not, it was not disgorgement, whatever the penalties were, though. Uh, I'd kind of be surprised if they're going to go after the penalty side just because uh, those asshat pricks over at the SEC, they were touting this as a win. So for them to tout this as a win, getting the amount of money that they, they got, and then to be like, no, we don't like it. I mean, I don't know, they do stupid-ass stuff all the time, so maybe they will. Uh, but that would not make any sense, right? <laughs> so, which is why they might do it, right? Because this is the SEC. Uh, completely ridiculous here. And so I shared this post just uh, it was a little over a half hour after the news dropped about the SEC choosing to appeal, and uh, I wrote the following. The news about the SEC appealing the ruling in the Ripple lawsuit has been known for over a half hour, and the price of XRP has only fallen one cent. Most XRP holders clearly understand this appeal does not harm or impact XRP holders. XRP still has regulatory clarity. Even if the SEC wins on appeal, it will only impact Ripple's XRP sales, not secondary market transactions from people like you and me. This appeal is not a big deal for holders at all. And so folks, that's why, and, and look, fine, your future people, maybe the price of XRP goes a little bit lower, but I, I, I think that what I was saying in the weeks leading up to this is pretty clearly correct. Yeah, fine, there are some people that got spooked because they probably don't know any better, but the market on a global scale, I mean, seems to not care. If this was going to be a bigger deal, it would have been a much more precipitous drop right out the gate two hours ago. We didn't get it. It's been two hours. The, again, information is disseminated quickly in the age of information. So I'm not saying it can't slide more than where we're at right now. I'm just saying, even if it does go a bit lower, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, this, and then some people see it as an opportunity and they'll snatch it up and then it's probably going to drop, a, you know, hit, bounce to some degree, whatever, off the lows. Um, and then on top of this, by the way, it is worth noting that the price of XRP was already going down before the news broke because the entire market's down today. So to some degree, this was going to happen anyway. And so I do think that XRP probably went like a couple pennies lower than it probably otherwise would have. But so what? This is absolutely not a big deal. And again, let me reiterate, even if the SEC wins, it, it, like even if they appeal and they win, which I don't think is going to happen, they, it, it still does not impact you and I. This has nothing to do with secondary market transactions. So you can still buy and sell on exchanges. And why is that the case? Well, because Judge Torres isn't, that, like, that issue isn't even before her. Like she literally can't rule on that because that's not what the lawsuit's about. It's about Ripple's transactions with programmatic sales. That's it. it and it just means Ripple selling. It, it, like that, that's it. It's just, that's the term that Ripple came up with. That's the reason that's the term that we use, use throughout the lawsuit. It's just Ripple uh, selling on exchanges to people that they don't know. And so, you know, obviously with it being a blind transaction, I mean, if, if you don't know you're buying from Ripple, how can you have, how can you pass the Howey test? So it's stupid. The SEC is still going to push for this anyway. Uh, but again, even if they win, it would only impact those transactions that Ripple's a part of, not anything with you and I. Again, that issue is not before them. 
For sure, that's not my opinion, that's fact. We don't have to worry about anything from a regulatory perspective. Exchanges are not going to delist XRP because there's an appeal. Nothing like that is going to happen. Minimal amount of panic from some people. Okay, whatever, too bad, so sad for them, I guess. But it doesn't, it just simply does not matter. It only sucks if you're Ripple, to be honest with you. That's the truth, that's, that's, it's the truth of the matter. Here's a post from Ripple's chief legal officer, Stuart Alderati. Here at number one, the SEC's decision to appeal is disappointing, but not surprising. This just prolongs what's already a complete embarrassment for the agency. The court already rejected the SEC's suggestion that uh, Ripple acted recklessly, and there were no allegations of fraud, and, of course, there were no victims or losses. Number two, instead of faithfully applying the law, this agency under this chair continues to engage in litigation warfare against the industry. We are evaluating whether to file a cross-appeal. Either way, the SEC's lawsuit has been irrational and misguided from the start, and we're ready to prove that yet again in the appellate court, once again taking the lead for the industry. And number three, coincidence that the SEC's enforcement director announced his resignation about an hour before this? Uh, yeah, and so they're talking about Gruel. Uh, he's, he's out of here. Uh, I won't go further into that in this video. It's not necessary, but that's what he's referencing in case you're wondering. Um, and, and by the way, worth mentioning this as well. This is a story back in the middle of August this year. Here's the headline from the Crypto Basic. Potential SEC appeal. Ripple CLO says only less than 10% of appeals lead to reversal. So not only is very clearly the law on our side here, like we just are, like, we're, we're correct. We, we just are as a, as a community. 10% uh, of appeals lead to a reversal. That's it. Odds are not exactly great for the SEC. And that was cited by uh, Stuart Alderati himself here. So I thought I'd mention that. Uh, here's what Brad Garlinghouse had to say. If Gensler and the SEC were rational, they would have moved on from this case long ago. It certainly hasn't protected investors and instead has damaged the credibility and reputation of the SEC. Somehow, they still haven't gotten the message. They lost on everything that matters. Ripple, the crypto industry, and the rule of law have already prevailed. While we'll fight in court for as long as we need, let's be clear. XRP's status as a non-security is the law of the land today, and that does not change even in the face of this misguided and infuriating appeal. Remember when the SEC tried unsuccessfully to file an interlocutory appeal, they made clear they had no intention of challenging XRP status as a non-security. And folks, that is a key takeaway also. And I think that news broke, what, August of last year, I want to say? Like, literally, the SEC wrote to Judge Torres and said, yeah, it's just a computer code with no inherent value. We're, we're, you know, we're not going to challenge the, 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 and I'm paraphrasing here, but, uh, well, that part they did say, but I'm also paraphrasing, uh, we, the SEC, a bunch of asshat pricks we are, we are not going to challenge that determination that XRP itself is not a security. They wrote that to the judge, and again, I'm paraphrasing that part, but they made it very clear they're not going to. Not only that, they can't anyway. As Attorney Hogan uh, pointed out, he was the first I saw to point this out after the, uh, the uh, decision came down in July of last year. Uh, you know, this is just dicta, D-I-C-T-A. Uh, it's, just, it's just perspective that was added that Judge Torres didn't have to add, the part about XRP itself not being a security, and as a result, of, of just I mean, a matter of fact that it's not something that was technically ruled on, it was just an additional statement she threw in there in the decision, it can't be appealed. Attorney Hogan brought that up over a year ago. This, Folks, this is the law of the land. XRP is in the clear. Everything is fine. There's a few people that are panic selling, and it's not going to matter. This is not going to prevent XRP from, uh, from doing whatever it's going to do this market cycle. If XRP doesn't hit a new all-time high and we have a proper alt season, then that's on XRP. It's not because of this. I just don't buy it. And you can see by the very minimal reaction to this point by the market on a global scale. So, and I would argue, again, even if XRP starts tanking more in the hours to come, over the next 20, fine. Even if it drops 15, 20% from wherever the hell it was, okay. You know, it's it doesn't matter. Most people get that it doesn't matter and then it's going to be increasingly understood as more time passes. This is just initial panic anyway. But then as people figure out they're making foolish decisions, what do you think happens? There's nothing hanging over XRP. There is no, no little black cloud. It's all lifted. We're good. Somebody named Michael wrote to Brad Garlinghouse and said, you, you are surprised? Question mark. And Brad Garlinghouse wrote, I'm not surprised. I'm pissed. 
I'm pissed that the SEC is spending our taxpayer money on a losing battle. I'm pissed that they are able to act without recourse or consequence. Regardless, we will prevail for Ripple, for the XRP Army, and the crypto industry. Well said, Brad. We appreciate it. Somebody named Patrick wrote to Brad Garlinghouse and said, People don't like to lose. They don't like to admit they were wrong and will crash the ship into the rocks and then blame someone else. Uh, to which that <laughs> Brad responded, They certainly are not a rational economic actor. They are spending taxpayer money, and there is no recourse or consequence for them to continue to fight this losing fight. Exactly. And so I don't even think they're going to win against Ripple here, but again, it would only impact Ripple. It does not matter to you and I. I don't like seeing this. I don't like seeing this happen to them, because Ripple's a good faith actor, obviously. But it doesn't matter to you and I. It, as XRP owners, it just doesn't. This is a post from uh, XRP community member and attorney Fred Rispoli. He says, SEC appeals. Ripple will cross appeal. The SEC's company-ending district court cases against Coinbase and Kraken continue. Life continues. Don't freak out. <laughs> but if you are a crypto single-issue U.S. voter, you absolutely cannot vote for Harris Wall's ticket. There is no reset. Yeah, well, that's certainly true. If you're a one-issue vote, there is no crypto reset. He's 100% hitting the nail on the head here. Uh, no, and I don't, I don't want another four years of this. Four to eight years. No, no, thank you. No, 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 th 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 thanks for offering, though. Here's another post from Attorney Rispoli. For the XRP holders, here is the SEC v. Ripple appellate timeline. Number one, SEC brief likely due December 2nd, 2024. SEC likely to seek permissible 30-day extension, so will be due shortly after January 1st, 2025. Number two, Ripple will cross-appeal. Its opening brief will be due around the same time. Number three, the opposition briefs will be due around uh, the, uh, February 2nd, 2025. Ripple will likely take its extension, taking that to March 2nd, 2025. Number four, reply briefs will be due end of March 2025. Number five, an oral argument will be scheduled for sometime September through October 2025. Number six, a ruling will be handed down from the Second Circuit in January 2026 at the earliest, likely March or April, though. Uh, so there you go. You know, this is going to, it's going to be concluded after this bull run. It's, that's a virtual certainty and it's not going to matter. Like if, if this were going to be horrific for XRP, we would have seen in the first couple hours, a way bigger drop than three cents. Okay. I'm not saying it can't go lower. Fine. But if it were going to be disastrous, it would be way worse. Sorry. It would have been a bloodbath right out the gate and it could have persisted for longer than just a few hours. I'm, I'm, maybe it does, but my God. There isn't a whole lot of force at this particular moment in time. And here's what Attorney John Deaton had to say. Um, I haven't seen a new post from him, but I wanted to share this with you because this explains exactly what is probable to go down. Uh, because uh, you may recall that there was this post, and I talked about it on my channel at the time, uh, from about a week ago from po Fox Business Journalist Eleanor Terrett. He said, a former SEC lawyer who recently left the agency tells me the SEC will probably appeal Judge Torres' July 2023 ruling uh, concerning the XRP programmatic sales in the Ripple case, partly because everyone over at the SEC truly believes the decision is correct, so on and so forth, right? Okay, uh, so that was her source, and that has indeed come to pass. Now, on that news from a week ago, here's what John Deaton had to say. As someone who knows the Ripple case very well, considering I was an active litigant for over two and a half years, and considering Judge Torres cited my amicus brief, and the 3,800 XRP holder affidavits I submitted, as well as my efforts as amicus counsel in the library case, uh, let me comment. In the Ripple case, Judge Torres did not apply all three factors of the Howey test. Some people describe the Howey test as a four-factor test because the third factor has two prongs. I don't believe an appellate court will rule Judge Torres was in error in applying the third prong. Judge Torres made her ruling very fact-specific. The SEC did not rely on any expert testimony related to XRP holders. It was excluded anyway, but the judge did rely, however, on the XRP holder affidavits I submitted. An appellate court could say, just as Judge Torres acknowledged, there could be a scenario where secondary sales could qualify as investment contracts because the facts meet all the Howey factors. But in the Ripple XRP case, the facts presented just don't satisfy it. Thus, the case gets affirmed on appeal, but it doesn't prevent the SEC from arguing secondary sales constitute investment contracts in other cases. Finally, Judge Torres ruled secondary sales on exchanges 
did not satisfy the third prong of Howie. And since all Howie factors must be satisfied, there was no need for her to apply the second prong, common enterprise. So folks, this was the, st the strategy right here. Judge Torres ruled on one prong. Why did she do that? Well, because in the event that there's an appeal, uh, she can just go back and argue on a different prong. So, so check this out. Here's what, here's what uh, John Deaton then said. The common enterprise factor was, in my opinion, the weakest part of the SEC's case against Ripple. Thus, even if the Second Circuit ruled Judge Torres erred applying the third prong, the SEC doesn't win the case. The case would go back to Judge Torres for her to apply the common enterprise prong, and she would likely rule the SEC didn't establish a common enterprise. If that happened, the SEC would lose again and then have to appeal all over. It makes no sense to appeal this ruling. If Judge Torres did rule against Ripple, Ripple could then appeal. It makes no sense and would be a total waste of taxpayer money to appeal this decision, which is why someone like Gary Ginsburg might just appeal. <laughs> so folks, this is more than just a little bit of an uphill battle for the SEC. Again, even if this goes back, it's appealed and it goes back to Torres, she's just going to rule on a different prong of the Howey test. The SEC still loses and it does not change the legal status of XRP and everything is fine. This isn't going to screw the bull run. If XRP doesn't go this cycle, there this is not an excuse. I, I feel very strongly about this. And again, I think it's pretty clear that uh, I'm correct on that, or you would have seen a way bigger drop right out the gate. Again, now it's it's been, you know, coming up on two and a half hours at this point since the news broke. And again, a three cent drop followed by a two cent gain just about. Uh, I mean, again, fine. Maybe it goes lower. I'll, I'll say it again. Maybe it goes lower, but... Does, does it look like that move had like a ton of force? Like, do you think that people the world over actually think that this is somehow going to be just disastrous for XRP? Because that's what people believed, understandably so, in December of 2020. Does it seem like that again right now? Obviously not. <laughs> this doesn't matter. None of this matters. So I, I see a lot of people concerned, um, and I understand. That's why I wanted to make this video in part to not just share with you the news, but maybe uh, quash some fears here, because it doesn't make sense to be fearful here. And there's a lot of misunderstandings of people thinking that this is bad for XRP when it simply is not. We are fine. And plus, on top of this, I mean, there's so many things that could happen in the interim. You know, you could have somebody else in charge of the SEC. This thing could ultimately get dropped. Who knows? Who knows? There's all sorts of moving parts. You know, I'm not going to make that prediction. I'm just saying that could happen. Also, Congress can take action. That, that could happen. Who knows? Because this is going to take a long time to be to be concluded. But this is... This, this is this will be a new case. <laughs> it's really stupid, and I'll keep reporting on this, but uh, everything won't be okay, right? <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.